everybody, and welcome to the 1224 Podcast. I'm Kate. I'm Shay. And we're here to talk to you about everything animation. Though this episode is a little more serious than the previous episodes we've done, as we're going to discuss about diversity, especially in the voiceover industry within animation. Um, we've invited our friend Steven, who is an aspiring voice actor of color, to come and talk to us about it. Welcome, Steven. Oh my gosh, thank you for such a beautiful intro, Kate. Um, yeah, hi Aww. everybody. Uh, you know, as as she introduced me, you know, I'm Steven, aspiring voice actor, voice actor in the making, yada yada. Uh, I talk, do voices, yada. Um, and we're here to talk about a very serious topic on what's going on with the voice acting industry. So, Kate, set the stage, please. Oh, me? Oh, stop. You, you don't have to. <laughs> um... Uh, also, Stephen is from the Bacon Hour podcast, so if you can check his oh, yeah. stuff out. Um, there's, there's probably a link in the description somewhere. If you just dig around there a little bit, you know. I, we wanted to talk about this um, ever since this news recently about white actors such as Jenny Slade and Kristen Bell um, having to step down their roles in animated characters that are biracial slash black characters um, and will be recasted with black voice actors and actresses. Um, hearing this news sparked a lot of conversation about how animated characters in their respective race and ethnicity, which are two different aspects that we should both talk about, of course, um, should be represented in terms of voice acting. Um, and I kind of just want to have a conversation about that since, uh, it's been a topic that uh, should be said for a while now. And, um, you know, with the things going on, there the topic has just been brought up so recently. So um, does anybody have, like, initial thoughts about um, what's happening right now? Uh, I- I- I'll go first. Uh, so my thoughts on all of this that's going down is probably, like... At first, it caught me a lot by surprise because I was thinking like, you know, there are these these voice actors who've been doing this this voice of this character for like so long, and like, you know, they're they're pretty much, you know, they've been, you know, fit the bill to the role, you know, because you know it's it's who they have become, or you know, yada yada, um, and just hearing them like, you know, have to say like, I'm stepping down because you know I'm not here to offend anybody or or like do that or just just for their own reason and so you know I was like kind of just thinking about it more and more and I'm like you know what maybe you know like my first initial reaction was probably like along the lines of like you know no you know don't go you were born for this role but um you know thinking about it more and you know I'm a very open-minded person I thought like I think it is time to just open the doors to uh these you know people who could be voicing these characters and who are you know of people of color and so like you know let, let them in you know let, let's diversify voice acting and you know just make it normalized yeah so i guess like with my thoughts on like this whole situation um i'm pretty divided on it Although, like, with the statements, I guess, I mean, I guess over the past few days, I've come with a more, like, definitive opinion on, like, just the whole concept mm-hmm. of, like, voice act, like, the voice actors lining up with the character in terms of, like, race. Mm-hmm. Um, but with the situation, like, with a bunch of people stepping down, I think some of them are genuine within like them wanting to step down like jenny slate i do um believe is very genuine and like her reasoning but like with people who have been voicing characters for years now doing it i think they're just doing it for like a pr stunt type thing like they're like oh we should do this before like people start like yelling at us like people haven't been kind of yelling at you for decades now Mm -hmm. um Mm. I'm more speaking, like, specifically with, like, Family Guy, especially. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Because I'm, like, 
Pistachio is older than me. <laughs> yeah. And, like, you guys never saw an issue with this until now. When, like, we're how many seasons in? Like, what, 20? Probably more. Wow. Yeah, it's a long show. So, I don't know what... I don't know. Like, again, some of them I think is Jenny, like Jenny Slate. And then, um, was it the person who plays, like, the girl in Central Park? Yeah, right? Kristen the, Bell. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I feel like that's also, like, a more genuine apology, like, with more, like, quote-unquote recent shows. Yeah. But, like, with shows where it's been going on for decades and just, like, why do you care now? Right. Mm-hmm. Which... I know caring now is better than caring never, but even then, when you care so late, is there really purpose within your words sometimes? True facts. Y- yeah, you make a pretty good point. Wow. Yeah. I mean, like, why? Like, it should it's matter. A- yeah, yeah, yeah. Go ahead, actually. Oh, yeah. Um, You know, I just want to say, like, you know, if it didn't matter, or it didn't matter, if nobody batted an eye then, then, like, you know, what's the big idea of, like, batting an eye now? It's like, huh. Kind of, I, I just scratch my head at it. Um, Kate, you are saying? Yeah. It's, it's very hypocritical and kind of just, you know, doing it just because, you know, this whole thing with Black Lives Matter is, like, you know, happening right now and you just decide to do it just because um, mm-hmm. of uh, the movement. And... Um, even though this movement has been going on for years, you still, like, continue to do that until up to this point, which, Mm -hmm. uh, is so ridiculous, and I would also agree with Shayla about giving leeway to the recent voice actors because those were also recent shows, but at the same time for me, I feel like, why were they even given those roles in the first place? I mean... Definitely. Yeah, I... Yeah, no, 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 you're fine. I, I'm i just very passionate about this as I am also an inspiring voice actor of color and I definitely want to advocate for uh, black voice actors as well because um, I, I'm very passionate about this topic ever since I kind of liked voice acting and um, it's, it's great to see characters of color that you can see and relate to, but... Um, for me, it's like, I've always wondered what, who was behind this mic? Who was this voice that was bringing this character to life? And I feel like if it's someone that there, that is, if the actor isn't identified with the race and or ethnicity, then it's like, wow, that's kind of a letdown, honestly. I have to, I have to do kind of agree with you there. Um, Mm -hmm. and I, I also do agree with you that like, you know, I relate to you as well, Kate. I'm like, you know, when I discovered voice acting, who's behind this, this, this mm-hmm. character, you know, do they look like them or something? Because I was like young and I was like, you know, I, I didn't know much about it. Right. And it, it was, it's kind of, you know, now being kind of like open to this more, it is a little bit of a letdown that like, you know, you, you have a lot of. I, I think a good example of, of like this is probably like um I don't remember his the voice actor's name, but he played Cleveland on Family Guy. And for the longest time I thought, Oh, you know, it's probably you know, somebody who's black, right? And but like after digging some more I found out like I I was kind of like flabbergasted and I was like, No way this is the guy and then there's like footage out there of him doing Cleveland's voice at like a panel or something. I was like whoa like Ooh. that's kind of eye-opening um but yeah i that's kind of i relate to you there mm-hmm. i think the similar situation happened uh in the simpsons with uh the character apu oh who, yeah 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 um who is a indian identified character but the voice actor is white i believe yeah yeah mm-hmm. and like didn't recently he also finally was going to quote unquote step down his role or whatever yeah yeah the poo situation such a weird situation though mm-hmm. because like 
Okay, I don't remember when you said he was going to step down. Was it, like, this year? Or was it, like, a few years ago when the documentary came out? I think it was a few years when the documentary came out, because I remember there was so much, like, buzz around that. Okay. The documentary? So, there is a documentary that came out. I think it's called, like, The Problem with Apu. Mm -hmm. And so, it more so breaks down, like, um, Apu being, like, a stereotype within writing, and then also, like, how the voice... Like, him being voiced by, like, a white man correlates with that. From what I remember, I've seen clips of it. Um, I have a bad memory. <laughs> it's <laughs> so all good. If I'm if I'm wrong, just correct me. But, um... Oh, yeah. But I think... Oh, God, where was I? But, yeah, so... Yeah. <laughs> there was... So, yeah, basically, Hank Azaria, who's the voice of Apu, along with, like, many other people in The Simpsons, because The Simpsons only has, like what five to six voice actors basically um yeah no there's like a lot less voice actors than expect for like the amount of characters there are oh yeah damn that's that's range for the voice actors yeah like especially if you look at the simpsons movie like the end credits because they show off like the pictures of all the characters with the voice actor name I think the only person who doesn't voice more than one is Lisa. (laughs) But, um, anyway, sorry. But, um, you're good. Okay. But yeah, with Apu, I think it's also just like the other reason was just like in relation to him being a stereotype was like the biggest thing about that situation versus the voice. I mean, the voice acting is still a pretty big thing, but like, I think within the documentary, it's just like, the writing of Apu, like mm-hmm. he has, like yeah. he has eight kids. He runs a shady, like convenience store, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Wow. Yeah. Like it's, just the I, way he was portrayed. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but of course, like him having a white voice actor also, like, kind of, I don't know how to explain. Like, yikes! What? It's yeah, kind like of it's like, also like a pretty like, like uh, perpetuated more. So. Yeah. 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 Like, there's some very, like, fine gray lines there that would kind of come off as, like, very stereotypical. And then there's, like, other times where it's, like, I don't know. Yeah, there's just some gray lines in there. This is why we kind of have to have these types of conversations. So, you know, these types of offensive and quote-unquote stereotypical acts, you know, don't happen again. And, um, you know... I was I was actually about to mention before we actually started discussing that like this is an open space and um, to share um, your you guys' opinions and you know by the end of this we're all here to learn listen and understand one another um, and yeah I mean yeah I think it's also just the lack of you know people of color within the voice of it industry that. Um, that just needs to be uh, addressed. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. I was literally watching the documentary I Know That Voice for my voiceover class like a few months ago. And um, and it was produced by Don D- John DiMaggio, who's very well known for Futurama and Jake the Dog from Adventure Time. And, um, you know, although it was like a really great documentary about voiceover... Um, like, there was just particular scenes that kind of rubbed me in the wrong way when he kind of just started to brag about how he was so good at, like, voicing a black character, and he was, like, doing the impressions, too, that sounded very stereotypical and kind of just made me very uncomfortable. I watched that documentary, too, and, um, I do have to say that, like, you know, I I found it entertaining, um, you know, at first, and then, like, when I remember watching it a few times over again and again, and I do remember the scenes you're talking about, Kate, and, you know, I, I didn't, th- I, that really didn't bother me the first time around, but now remembering, you know, the scenes where he's, you know, being praised for, you know, doing a black person's voice really well, it, it kind of, it now kind of does, it, it does bother me a little bit, but, like, you know, not so much where I'm gonna like lash out or something, of course. But um, yeah, 
I kind of, it's just very, rubs me the wrong way too. Thanks for being honest uh, the first time around. And um, yeah, oh, yeah, I mean, I feel like for me, uh, I also just had a question that I kind of like wanted to bring up. Oh, yeah. And right ahead. I was, yeah, I was like wondering if you think that um, representation, the rules of representation should from like live action mediums like movies and shows should apply to uh you know representation within uh animation especially towards um voice acting and um voice actors portraying a a character i gotta think on this a little bit because it's like you know Mm -hmm. i have have a lot to say but i need to structure it and so yeah. Shay, do you wanna do you wanna go ahead and and say a few things? Um, yeah. So, I guess my general stance on it, it's with voice acting specifically, because of course I think there's a lot of like diversity problems within animation. Mm-hmm. Um, but with voice acting specifically, I think that casting should make more of an effort to at least line up like the characters with the voice actors um like just in general but like i also think well it's hard to explain for me yeah because i'm more so in i'm more so the opinion where if it's a story like if the story is very central to the character's identity um, right? Mm-hmm. That, yeah. like, the voice actors should definitely align with that. Because, let's say, okay, the boondocks, for example. Right. If the I'm boondocks, if that. every, if, yeah, like, if all the main characters are voiced by white people, one would oh, be kind Lord. of messed up because they say the N word all the time in that show. Yeah. But yeah. That would two, be very, like, yikes. Yeah. And then, two, with the narrative of the boondocks, it's a lot about black culture specifically. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, so like, cause a lot of topics within it is kind of like deconstructing black, specifically like black masculine culture too. But that, that's like a different thing. But, um, like it's so rooted within, again, I sound like like the same phrase like several times in a row. It's so rooted in black culture that, like, if, a, if white people voice the main characters, it would be, like, really weird. And also, I feel like there's such a disconnect, too, because if you're not from that background, right, you don't understand, like, the struggles people go through or, like, how, like, again, a culture exactly works. Mm-hmm. It's, like, it's kind of, like, the same feeling when, like, you're in a class right and it's about like a specific culture but like your teacher's not from that culture because they're basically just reading from a book that's also probably written like there's like an off chance that's also written someone by written by someone who isn't of that culture either right i think if that were the case and like going off your example from the boondocks like if that were the case it would get into this like very like controversial territory and like that would be very just that'd be very problematic um my okay on my stance is i think that you know there should be there should be the the doors open for a lot of these these um voice actors who are from like you know different ethnic backgrounds and stuff and like it it would be very nice to see a just like you know, maybe an Asian character being voiced from somebody who's of, like, Asian descent. And there's, I, I know there's a good example of this, and it's in the show, The Casa Grandes, if you guys ever uh, heard about it. It's, like, the spinoff show that came out of the Loud House. Um, the whole the yeah. whole cast there is, like, completely Hispanic and, like, you know, not, even, even the staff, too, like, because they, they, 
the staff works very closely with the show creator and like they they will always put in something of like hispanic culture whether it be like you know stuff that were told to us as kids or like you know you know having your abuelita who's like you know heavily deep into like these quote-unquote remedies of like oh it'll cure anything um and like that that that's what i that's what i like to look for and like what i would love to see in the future and so you know you know diversity counts and it it matters too so Mm -hmm. open them gates bring us in right (laughs) Yeah. Let them in. Mm-hmm. Let them in. Let, come on. Let us in. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, that's awesome. Mm-hmm. I, I still need to watch that show. You still it, it looks so it good. It is. Like, <laughs> oh, my gosh. Like, you'll love it. Yeah. Oh, my God. It's really cute. It's I on like my list. the city vibe a lot. Oh, yeah. Me too. I like, uh, I, th- I think my favorite character there is, uh, it's probably like the not the not the baby, but like the youngest kid. Uh, I think his name's like Carlos or something. Yeah, him. He's wait. Is it like the the one um... with the little pomodoro? He's not a pomodoro. He's got like the little hair thing going on there. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah the cowlick. Yeah, the cowlick. Yeah, I like I like him. Oh, that's so cute. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, watch Casa um... Grandes, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta put that out there. Gotta, yes, yeah. go watch it. Go watch it. I gotta watch it. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, that's so awesome to see that um, portrayal of um, awesome representation, especially in the Latinx community. Oh, yeah. And yeah, I think also another example would probably be also Avatar The Last Airbender, the show which I recently just watched. Um, Yay! (laughs) Because um, literally every character is Asian, and there's a lot of Asian influences within the show, um, especially around Eastern Asian countries and etc. But um, unfortunately, when I looked up the cast, um, the majority of the voice actors were white. But... um, I think I think Uncle Iroh yeah. was like Uncle, one of the only yeah. Asian yeah. actors. He's uh Yeah. Yeah, it's Uncle Iroh and Zuko, definitely. Mm-hmm. So uh what was his name? Mako Iwamatsu and Dante Bosco. Yeah. Props yeah. to them. Props yes. Um t- what talented voices that were lent to that show. Like, yeah. Big. Yeah. Um I mean like Although the show ended and stuff, there's not a lot that we can do to, you know, replace those white voice actors with Asian voice actors. But um, definitely it's this is something that uh, that should be noticed, I feel like. And um, if someone Mm -hmm. were to make a uh, Asian centered or any um, cultural centered uh, show, then they should definitely just be voiced by um, people who have the same race, ethnicity, culture as, you know, the characters themselves, I feel like. And even the stories, too. Like, this kind of doesn't... This doesn't just, like, um, exclude from voice acting. I feel like it should include um, animation in terms of writing and... um, animation in general really yeah Yeah. animation has like i mean of course like other entertainment like um industries as well animation just has like a really bad gatekeeping problem oh yeah (laughs) oh boy which is also probably like why we see a lot of same voice actors for stuff um yeah so like tara strong is of course like the first example Mm-hmm. yeah um going on into that like and i get it like these voice actors they have like range and you know maybe you maybe there's a voice where they do that you can't tell that it's them or it's like oh i i, I recognize that voice because it's you know tara strong or it's so and so voice actor but like at some point like it's just kind of like you, you hear so much of their name in the industry and it's like it kind of gets a little saturated you know, yeah. if, if if one if I if I'd say, 
Um, and so, you know, I, I, for once in like a week or something, or like, you know, time passes and stuff like, I'd love to just hear like, just somebody else doing like a, a character, you know, somebody who's like a, a nice fresh voice and like just coming around and they're, you know, really good at it and stuff. And it's like, that's, that's something I'd love to hear. Yeah. Like, I think also with just like the gatekeeping aspect too. Well, this part, I don't, I mean, I mean, yeah, it's a strong world. I'll use strong words. Um, <laughs> yes. Use no. them strong but, words. Yeah. But, um, like, I think like an interesting example is like with Cree Summer also. Because Cree Summer, especially in, like the early 2000s, like less so now, but like if there was like a black girl in the cartoon, there was like a pretty high chance she was voiced by Cree Summer specifically. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Which. That kind of, it got to the point where it's kind of ridiculous, not gonna lie. Mm-hmm. Um, uh. Like, you know, just immediately, here, Cree Summer, take the role, you know? Yeah. Like, yeah. yeah, like, so, I, and I, I, th- I remember I, I wanted to say something when you guys got down to, like, Cree Summer when you mentioned her. Mm-hmm. It was, it's really, like, you know, interesting to know that, like, she was, she, for, I think one of her, like, first roles was, uh, Penny from Inspector Gadget, like the old like Inspector Gadget cartoon from like the eighties, like the early eighties, late seventies, I think. Mm-hmm. No, that was her, and I was like, "What? No way!" And then, and then, what's also very interesting is that like one of her more bigger roles was in like the like the super hidden gem of a Disney movie, uh, Atlantis. She played a uh, Princess Kita, and oh yeah, that's yeah, yeah, and that and that's like that's something that not a lot of voice actors get to say. It's like, oh, I was a technically a like busy princess or something i i would consider a busy presence mm-hmm. and so like you know i i there's something you know when the 2000s rolled around it's just something happened and then there used to now there's there was like the the trope of like having the group of kids and then there's always got to be like the one like black character or you know, whatever um and it's it's like they just you know if it's if it was a woman it was Cree summer and mm-hmm. it's like it just kind of went you know from there i'm like they they should have offered her like better roles and stuff yeah you know she's got it yeah i think like the early 2000s just a weird time just in terms mm-hmm. of like diverse cartoons because all the cartoons were pretty diverse but at the same time like there there was a lot of stuff going on early 2000s i don't know what was up with it but yeah. like it was just a wacky yeah. time. It was a mess. Yeah, this this is gonna be kind of yeah. a, little, a tiny tangent, but like it's still related to diversity. But it's more like with diversity, like within cartoons in general, like with creating characters, in pertain like pertaining to the early two thousands, like wasn't it also just like a time where everyone was like, we gotta capitalize off of anime, so let's kind of like use specifically like, Japanese influences like to do stuff because mm. mm-hmm. like a lot of like at least like with shows like I I remember watching a lot as a child like okay so of course like black character was in there was like at least one black character one black coded character right because like that's like the cool unquote obvious diversity within America quote unquote um but then like a lot of shows with like asian characters like the two i always think of is american dragon jake long and juniper lee for some reason i don't know why oh Oh. yeah where it was like hey magical element um magical element and like they fight or something i don't know this is a tangent (laughs) Let, let me go back to voice acting. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> it's all good. Yeah, no, it's all good. I, I I get what you mean. Yeah. Um. I have a question, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, like, with voice acting, um, I don't know how to phrase it exactly. So, like, you know how, of course, we're saying, like, the races should line up. What mm-hmm. if it's, like, kind of, like, 
the quote unquote opposite situation with what's going on. So like a person of color is voicing like a white person or maybe like there is a person of color behind like the voice, but it's not like exactly lining up. Mm-hmm. Oh. Hmm. oh yeah. yeah i know what you mean yeah 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 um i think with that so for for me my thoughts are on that um especially when um a person of color is voicing a white character i feel like that should be okay because white characters are so accepted into um animation and just media in general and um you know it's i feel like man i don't know what i'm trying to say (laughs) um i it's and there's already enough white voice actors to begin with so i feel like it's just that lack of um people of color within that within the industry um that i think you know a person of color should be okay to voicing a white character um and there's also the argument about uh pocs voicing pocs that aren't really necessarily within their race slash ethnicity um you know bringing the argument that you know the voice of samurai jack is um voiced by um the uh black voice actor phil lamar and um i think my stance is that like i feel like with that i wouldn't say it's an exception because that feels wrong to say but um i think <clears throat> you know it's it would have been cool if we got an asian man to play the role but you know we and also we just don't see a lot of black voice actors in in general and um you know it's also the fact that you know black and asian people exist like um and um i don't really necessarily know that like you know what's if that's okay or not but um you know phil lamar is was such a great actor for samurai jack that i think in a way for me that just wasn't it wasn't really offensive to me so i i don't know there's there's it depends there's there's like a yeah there's like a gray area yeah it's like you you either are like it's either like and and going on with to agree with you say that like yes there's a lot of white characters in in media and in animation that are so accepted now Mm -hmm. and if a person of color were voicing a, a white character it would I guess be accepted because it's you know it's very like I don't there's just no way to like kind of really like stereotype white people you know right true facts Mm -hmm. yeah yes and but when it's like if it's like some somebody like who is I guess like of this of of a race doing the voice of like a different race then it's like there's a gray area there because you i guess it just goes back to like you don't want to be offensive or anything mm-hmm. but you know you've been cast you've been cast as a role so you know you just got to kind of give it your best and you know kind of follow uh voice direction and stuff so yeah you know, my my stance yeah so my stance overall is just that like uh poc people voicing white characters is okay but when it's like uh poc uh voice actors voicing a like different completely different yeah yeah, completely different um you know uh ethnic character race then it's kind of like gray areas Mm -hmm. yeah i feel Mm -hmm. like i agree with yeah most of that and i feel like Mm -hmm. um although this happened you know we can't really reverse you know what happened with samurai jack and um yeah i feel like for in the future i feel like um casting should just do a better job of casting actors of color that align with the um uh 
character of color. And um, I think I also agree with Shayla that if it's if the writing, if the character is centered on their on their own identity, I feel like it would it would be so much very be very important for the voice actor to have those same experiences and cultural experience that uh, the character has uh, is also going to face in in their project. Yeah. Um, all right. Continuing that, I do know that the voiceover industry is still a white club. I mean, <laughs> um, yeah. I mean. We just need to open the doors of opportunity for all BIPOC, I mean, you know, Black, Indigenous, Latinx, Asian, you know, just open the doors for all of them. Yeah, pretty much. Everybody, like, bring them in. Yeah, we could, we would really love to hear, you know, just a fresh new voice who is of, you know, you know, BIPOC and whatever, and it's like, you know, that would just mm-hmm. yeah and I, it would make exactly. me happy to hear that um yeah there's also the argument that people are saying that like quote-unquote voice has no race and yeah yikes <laughs> Ooh, okay oh um, let's get into that yeah i guess with me that argument okay here's the thing with that argument yes In theory, voice shouldn't have a race, but at the same time, we cannot deny that there have been like several stereotypes regarding voice and race, right? Yeah. And then within, like, an industry where you are portraying a character, Mm -hmm. voice is very important, right? So, like, for example, if, like, it's. I have a lot of examples for this, but yes, voice shouldn't have a race at the same time. In the context of this Mm -hmm. art, like, of this discussion. It does. Right? Mm -hmm. It does, because these are still people that, like, kids will see and also look up to, right? Like, yes, your role models don't always have to align with, like, how you identify specifically, like for example, I have a lot of role models mm-hmm. that like don't aren't that aren't black. For example, yeah. I have a lot of role yeah. models that don't identify as female, right? But with something, but like seeing like yourself and someone with some part of your identity, it helps you like materialize that you can actually do something, which it's right. often harder for people of color right like within like the animation industry especially to like really see that because a lot of the people within these shows happen to be white and especially with voice acting too we don't have a lot of people that like we can really look at for that and also of course again like with voice doesn't have a race Again, you can't deny that, like, if voice didn't have... I don't, I don't know what I'm saying now. I'm just <laughs> going on and on, but, like... <laughs> no, you're okay. Yeah, we had a discussion about this a little while ago, and when I said that, you said, well, if if voice has no race, then represent. why does representation yeah. have a race? And it, you know, it. it's so... How... I don't. I wouldn't say mind blowing, but like, it makes sense that you know it's bullshit that quote unquote voice has no race, and um, I think people should consider those factors in casting voice actors. Saying that you know there's no one that could you know accurately fit the role is like just ridiculous to me. I was gonna bring up the um, My Hero Academia situation again. Um, yeah, go ahead. Where it was like. So basically, there's a black character on this anime called My Hero Academia, right? It's about superheroes. It's like a sci-fi <laughs> high, high, but but, anime, but, but whatever. Accurate. Um, Accu- <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay, sky yeah, High is really sky cool. High is pretty, it's pretty dope. Yeah, yeah, it is. It's a good yeah. movie. I don't accept Sky oh, High slander here. No. Um, 
<laughs> no, it's fine. It's okay. It's, it's okay. <laughs> but um, basically, there's a hero who's mm-hmm. black, right? And so the English dub came out, and like everyone was angry because they're like, she doesn't sound mm-hmm. black. Which again, that is that's a like stupid argument most, in that case. Like, what? Yeah. One brain cell do you have to have to make that? Uh, yeah. To try to make that argument. Yeah, and then like, guess what? The voice actress is black. Like, mm. wow. the only time when like voice doesn't have race argument work is when you're is literally when like someone only perceives a voice as like a super stereotypical thing. So like, for example, um. If someone thinks, like, again, I'm using black people a lot as an example because I'm black, and that's the experience I have in my life. Period, so, girl. Basically, it's like if people, like, if you're, like, saying, like, if people expect black people to always use um, AAVE, which is African American Vernacular English, right? Mm-hmm. It, not everyone uses that. Like, I don't, like, I mean, that argument holds up. Because, yeah, voice doesn't have a race because black people all sound different, right? But, like, when you're talking about voice acting, it's like, no, in this case, we're talking about diversity within voice acting. And yep. voice actors, there is a very, like, startling thing where you just see a bunch of white people, and especially a lot of white people voicing characters of color. So, in that case... We're, are, we're saying, hey, it would be better if you get a person of color to voice this character. I'm getting more oh angry than I expected it to be. <laughs> Amen. Yeah, it's okay. It's, you should this, be. Yes, it's valid. You That's know, valid. Is, we're here to talk about this. We're here to, to opinionate ourselves and stuff and, and like, you know. Yeah. yeah. Um, anyways, people who do voice acting, oh, can yeah. you speak, please? I mean, <laughs> we, we mainly yeah. do the talking. Go ahead, Steven, um, if you have so, any thoughts. You know, the whole argument that voice has no race. Hmm, it's, you know, wow, like you guys kind of already took, both of you already took the words out of my mouth. Um, <laughs> and, like, <laughs> I guess, you know, it's. Yeah, I, I know, it's, it's uh, good, I'm trying to like, formulate like, something to say that I, you guys haven't said already. Um,. I've never been this. I've never been this choked up. You're, you're good. I mean, I I think we're just all on the same page yeah, about it. Yeah. Yeah. You know, just you know, all of us being um, POCs. You know. Yeah. <laughs> um, I think just acting in general was and still is a very white world, and um, you know, I think in the future, just white people shouldn't play bi POC characters. Point blank period. Point blank period. Yeah. Yes, agreed. Yeah. <laughs> um. Uh. I have another question. Yes. Oh. So do tell. You have the floor. Time to. So I'm thinking about like, um, with voice acting, right? Of course, representation based. Yes. But this time, not about race. What do you guys think of, um, specifically in terms? Of like LGBTQ representation within mm. voice acting, Ooh. and I guess also gender. But like, I feel like mm. gender and voice acting is more. I wouldn't say complex, but like that one. I don't know. Yeah, I don't explain that one. Yeah, no. Yeah. I mean, I feel like gender should also be included in this conversation. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, a really great example of that is definitely Double Trouble from She-Ra and the Princess of Power, since Double Trouble is a non-binary character and is voiced by a non-binary vo- uh, person, uh, Jacob Tobia, um, who plays Double Trouble really awesomely, and yeah, and then I... It's also the fact that like Shira is very LGBTQ plus um, friendly in representation, and um, you know Shira slash Adora is um, voiced by uh, Amy Correro, who is Latina. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. So fun fact. Yeah. yeah period. Um, 
But it's also the fact that, like, Adora in the show is a lesbian. And, um, you know, I, I don't know what Amy's sexuality is, but she is married to a man. So I'm like, uh, I don't know if that should, like, you know, affect anything in terms of uh, the voice actor and the character's, like, sexualities aligning with each other. Yeah. I think yeah. of Shira, too. Like, mm-hmm. again, going off of, like, what I said about race, like, I'm very, like, more, like, not strict. Strict's not the right, like, exact word. I'm... Firm. Thank Firm. you. We have... <laughs> yeah, this is yes. a few days ago. I couldn't remember the word again. But, um, yeah, I'm very, like, firm about, like, um, more so with stuff like that when it comes in terms, like, it playing in the story. I mean, yes, I understand that, like, Adora, I guess spoilers or whatever, but, like, that's your problem at this point. Um, <laughs> if you so, watch Shira, go re- watch Shira. It's literally been, like, what, two months since it ended? Like, it's... Yeah, like, come on out. <laughs> yeah, but, um, like, that's more arguing, like, how you interpret the story of Shira too. Like, I mean, it's a pretty straightforward story, but, mm-hmm. like, mm-hmm. it's more, like, how much does Adora's love for Catra exactly play into the story? Which I guess will mm. determine your opinion also. Like, I mean, when I watch Shira all the time, I always have, like, a love-hate relationship with it. Except for the fifth season. But, um... Best season. Yeah. Legitimate, like, honestly, just read the Wikipedia for the first three seasons, watch then... the fourth season, and watch the fifth season. <laughs> yeah. Go read the wiki. Yeah, but, um... Like, I guess, like, her, in that, like, in She-Ra's case, it doesn't bother me as much, but it still bothers me. I don't know. But then again, I don't yeah. know. Yeah. Yeah, I'm like that, too. Yeah. Yeah. I... Yeah, it's like, if you're casting a non-binary voice actor for a non-binary character, it's like, well, you know, most of these characters in She-Ra are coded as LGBTQ+, so are yeah. you gonna cast LGBTQ actors? Like, I don't know. It's it's tricky. Yeah. Um, what's an like it's hard to say for like certain things too. Um right. just because like in terms of animation and LGBTQ representation, we don't have like a lot of examples to go off on either. Mm-hmm. Right? But I think again, we should really strive especially for like um I think especially for, like, trans and non-binary voices, we should definitely be, like, more... Firm. <laughs> yeah, just in general, <laughs> because they're oh, yeah. very underrepresented in all kinds of media, to be honest. True. Like, even in live action, there's, like, a there's a really bad problem with, like, um, casting actors that don't align with the sexualities of characters. But they're playing like a coming out story. So like the Love Simon franchise, right? <laughs> Is oh an example God. of this. I can't believe oh, this. <laughs> yeah, like I see franchise that happens in both Love Simon and in Love Victor. So um yeah. like both of the main like actors from off the top of my head, both of them are straight, but they're playing gay characters and playing them within a coming out story, right? And then that's just like Two examples out of like a gajillion. Um. Anyways, animation. We're we're getting there. Like, I mean, Steven Universe. I guess you can also argue too. Has like. Oh, that's true. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. We're like. I was just thinking about that. Same. Same. <laughs> yeah. But um, Steven Universe is. I think Steven Universe is a really like good job in like hiring a lot of people of color especially oh yeah yeah so like you got Estelle um aka queen ruler of VH1 in my childhood um she (laughs) plays Garnet who's heavily black coated and then you got I think aren't wait are all the gems voiced by people of color yeah they are um Dee Dee Magno Hall is uh, Voices Pearl, she's Filipina. Um, I know and then, Michaela yeah. Dietz. Yeah. Is that her name? I know she voices Amethyst. Yeah. Jasper's voiced by a black woman because she also voices Allura in 
I don't want to talk about Voltron, but um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, because it's like, yeah, all the gems for the most part that were introduced to, I think, except the diamonds. Mm-hmm. Yeah, except the diamonds are all voiced by people of color, which is really cool. Oh, that's yeah. dope. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Oh no, I was gonna say the other thing about sexuality specifically too. Sexuality's fluid, so that's why I'm not as much of a stickler. Mm. Yeah. Period. That's yeah. so true. Yeah. I'm so glad you brought that up. <laughs> also, like, sometimes people are closeted or whatever, and that's cool, right. too. Yeah. You yeah. don't force these things onto people, because that's exactly. messed up outing people, you know? Yeah. I'm sorry, please continue. I'm drinking water. <laughs> I forgot the pack of mine. <laughs> You're um, all good. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm, like, highly... Like I'm, I'm like very like bitly educated on all this stuff about sexuality and like gender, but like I have a very, a very like light to firm grasp on it, and you know I just you know would I would say that you know, you know just as much as as people of color you know let in also, you know a lot of the LGBT, you know, voice actors out there just you know bring them on into they matter as well. Put them in the put story. Them, yeah, put them in the you know? story. Yeah. Make them the main character, yes. even. Heck yeah. And just, you know, more just underrepresented uh, people in in all aspects of animation. In, like, many departments of animation. I feel like I'm talking a lot. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you're all good. Is <laughs> you know. Yeah, we just talk. talk. I know, but I want to give equal footing to the fellow, to the other people on this podcast also, which is you two. Oh, Please, you're so oh, considerate. Yeah. I'm trying. We're to all be. so considerate. This is this is a space for love. It is. I mean, that's why we wanted to create this podcast. I'm you proud know, of you guys for yeah. Doing it. Wow, oh, thank you, thank yeah. you. Yeah. Thanks for thanks for speaking with us, Steven. Thanks for talking to us and being so honest about a topic that, you know, just needs to be oh, said. You know, it's no problem. You know, I would I, I've become more open minded over time and you know, this is probably the the best way to, you know, get my opinion out there. You know, if if some people don't like it then, you know, I don't care. You know, it's it's my opinion. It's it's what I believe in. You know, and, and it's you know, your guys' opinion just as much as well. Um I just love mm-hmm. speaking about this stuff because, you know, my passion. Love it. It's it's a conversation that I feel like should matter to mm-hmm. all of us. Period. Yeah. Um, I was going to ask, are there any more thoughts on anything at all? I was going to mention a, more towards about gender, about like, um, like how, for example, in Bob's Burgers, Tina's voice actor is a guy and... Um, you know, just the switch between, like, voice actors playing a, uh, you know, gender that isn't, like, not their gender, I guess. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. Sorry. You're all good. Um, I mean, I think for me, it's, like, um, it, it's cool to, uh, you know, play a character that isn't the same gender as you but i feel like that shouldn't be necessarily the case for trans and non-binary characters because Mm -hmm. they're so Mm underrepresented but um it's it's more like you know it's the same thing with like how white characters are accepted cisgender characters are already accepted into um all types of medias and um uh you know in terms of acting, guys have played roles that were meant for females, and and vice versa with females playing male characters. And yeah. I think that's um, pretty darn cool, you know? Uh, mm-hmm. The spectrum in terms of gender and sexuality are very fluid, and um, I think in this case, it's more just, um, like all of us said in, in the end, opening those doors for literally everybody of color of gender sexuality everything yes yes preach it girl (laughs) thank you i try (laughs) 
Anyways, thank you, Stephen, for joining us in this oh, conversation. You're absolutely welcome, Kate, Ooh, Shay, both you. of yeah. you. It's, it was a real honor to just get to be on this episode and talk about this. Like, you know, hope I'm coming back, but, you know, we'll see. Yeah. Oh, definitely. 100%. I don't know yes. for what, but <laughs> well, well, you will come back. Yeah. <laughs> I'd like to get both of you on my podcast someday, and I'd like to just, you know, we'll have a conversation about something pointless or that matters whatever it may be you know we just all vibe together yeah oh yeah <laughs> um. definitely thank you for listening everybody oh, yeah. let us know in the comments about your thoughts about this conversation let's just keep the conversation going yeah, you know yeah was... this conversation is at the stop yeah get outspoken people get you know tweet about it go tell your friends you know have this conversation with them too yeah and that just goes out for all types of representation yes. everywhere. So, Shay, would you like to end this episode? Do it. Do it. Do All it. right. Thank you for listening to the 1224 podcast. My name is Shay. And my name is Kate. And my name is Steven. Let us know your thoughts. Please subscribe if you would like to. Or follow uh, if you're on any other media. I don't know what they do for subscribe things. <laughs> um... But we upload every Sunday, or try to, and... Yeah. Yeah. If you have yeah. any topics you would like us to talk about, let us know anywhere. You'll see our socials in the description. And yep, please mine. remember to keep donating to several different Black Lives Matter causes and also other causes relating to marginalized groups. Thank you. Yeah. Have a Thank great day, you. everybody. Thank you. We'll see you all later. Bye. Eat your vegetables.